Downtown San Francisco has been falling on tough times and tonight we take a deep dive into what's being done to pull the heart of the city out of its pandemic slump. One after another, retailers have been closing their doors. AT&T is the latest to announce the closure of its flagship store near Union Square. The company citing a change in shopping habits. And, of course, the big shocker this week for a lot of us, Westfield is leaving its namesake mall. That is on top of Nordstrom, Old Navy, and others closing up shop. And what about office spaces? Take a look at this graph from the city. With tech layoffs and some still working from home, office vacancy rates went from a historic low of about 5% before the pandemic to a record high of almost 30%. And that happened in just a matter of three years. But one expert sees some silver linings, and he tells our Wilson Walker demand will come back as downtown San Francisco evolves once again. San Francisco skews heavily to tech tenants, of course, but you have a lot of professional and business services as well. If you want to see some silver linings in the doom and gloom, look at San Francisco's financial district through the eyes of market uh, researcher reason. Robert Sammons. For so starters, there's the reason. timing of the downturn. That was the best timing, honestly, if there has to be good timing, and that there were a lot of projects south of market that could have been under construction. You know, we could have had a much higher vacancy rate, quite frankly. He also points to the explosion of city-based AI ventures. The different companies, about a million square feet of need from that sector alone. But the downturn, he says, is not over yet. The vacancy numbers, about 28% citywide, will likely grow for at least another year. Uh, they will rebound eventually, but again, we're saying probably mid-24 before the recovery really starts to take hold. So what is happening right now? Well, more employers are asking workers to come in at least part of the time, and that is shifting things around. And employers are, are trying to woo their employees back to work. So they are relocating in some cases when their lease expires to the best of the best buildings in San Francisco right now. Uh, we've seen it tick up, again, especially Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, where it's about, well, it's really above 50% occupancy to the pre-pandemic levels. Yes, things are going okay. Um, in the middle of the week, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays have picked up a bit. Um, we're not quite pre-COVID levels yet, but um, those days are pretty good. Um, Local Monday, Roots is Monday. one of the downstream businesses surviving in this very different environment. Owner Lauren Kettelopper says she is seeing some new changes like more catering requests. Um, I think a lot of companies are trying to entice their employees to come back to the office, give them a little um, you know, perk to come in and have some face-to-face -face time. That is why top-tier office space, often newer buildings, is still in demand. The vacancy rate in those buildings is less than 10%. It's many of the city's older office buildings for which the future is less certain. And that, too, will eventually change the market. You know, you do have buildings that probably will be pulled out of inventory because they are obsolete for office use. So that lowers the inventory of the office stock in San Francisco, which adjusts the vacancy rate, which lowers because those buildings that had such high vacancy are gone now. In short, the business district as it used to be is going away. The change needs to happen. It needs to be a more mixed-use neighborhood. It really needed to be more of a mixed-use neighborhood pre-pandemic, right? This is our chance to remake it. But it takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of resources. It's not going to just be the city. It's probably going to have to be the state and federal governments that kick in something to give incentives to woo developers to either convert or to build new in the CBD. And no one's quite sure how to do that yet. No, no one's quite sure how that works. And a lot of people are trying to figure that out right now. Swapping obsolete office buildings for housing, now kind of a holy grail in the city, but converting buildings is difficult. That is why you're not hearing about a lot of it. Then there is what you might call the San Francisco confidence question. Can a city with a battered reputation inspire people to move back downtown? Can AI actually fill office buildings? These are questions that will take years to answer in what is a monumental shift for this end of the city. So on that note, the city is trying to make it a little easier to turn those office spaces into housing. In fact, just this week, supervisors approved a package of bills that would cut some of the red tape on zoning. This means more possibilities for property owners to convert their vacant office spaces into apartments, event venues, and spaces for small businesses. You heard Wilson talking about that there. 